The city of Rogue River has a plentiful water supply, drawing on several wells and directly from the Rogue River during the summer months when the water runs clear. Pumps by the river push the water up to the water treatment plant. The raw river water arrives at the plant to be cleaned and disinfected according to the stringent guidelines of the Oregon Health Authority. Here in the raw water inlet pipe, chlorine is injected with a Venturi mixer. Chlorine is a disinfectant that kills bacteria and is produced electrolytically from a salt water solution with an on-site chlorine generator. Alum and polymer are also added to the water. Alum to make the dirt in the river water sticky and polymer to help clean the filters. In the two upflow clarifying tanks, millions of plastic beads will help clean the water. The bottom of the clarifying tank is full of the plastic beads trapped by a screen. When the water is pumped into the bottom of the tank, the dirt in the water sticks to the balls, leaving the water clear and clean. Periodically, the tanks are cleaned by forcing air at high pressure through the balls, which removes the dirt. The dirty water then flows out through the middle trough, out the building and into the backwash lagoon. From the clarifying tank, the water travels through the filter tank, which will leave the water crystal clear and fresh. Here you can see the top layer of anthracite coal. Beneath it are layers of progressively larger rocks. Yeah. Now you can actually see the water shooting out. Like the clarifying tank, the filter tank is also cleaned by a backwash of air under pressure and clean water. The dirty water wells up, flows into the outlet trough, and out to the backwash lagoon. Every plant function is constantly monitored by computer as well as by inline monitors for temperature, pH, and chlorine. River water in the fall runs about 55 degrees. A pH target for treated water is 7.2, slightly basic. The state doesn't allow chlorine levels of more than 4 milligrams per liter. This plant's level runs less than 1. A backup lab test of the finished water for pH and chlorine is required. This sample from the clear well is called first use. The finished water is piped to the underground clear well and is then pumped to the system for people to use. Water from the city's wells is pumped up to the reservoir. The reservoir is on a hill overlooking the city. This elevation gives the gravity feed water a pressure of about 110 psi, similar to that of the water plant. The tanks hold a total of 1.7 million gallons and are filled by both the wells and the water plant. Sparkling fresh water is delivered for drinking, cooking, showering, watering, washing cars, and of course for flushing toilets into the city's wastewater system. Sewage runs downhill by gravity but along the way to the water treatment plant, the liquid must be raised in steps by lift stations. Maintenance includes checks for grease buildup in the sewer line. Residents should never put cooking fats, oils, or grease down their drains. It can block both residential pipes and city sewer lines. Always drain cooking oils and fat into a container and then dispose of it in the trash. Sewage enters the plant at the headworks, where objects are removed from the liquid by mechanical screens. While kids sometimes drop toys into the toilet, nothing but the three P's, pee, poop, and toilet paper, should ever be flushed. Many things advertised as flushable simply aren't. Don't flush paper towels, baby wipes, or feminine hygiene products. Next, the flow goes through a small clarifier which filters grit then into two contact basins. From the basins, it flows into the two sequential batch reactors. In the reactors, blowers at the bottom of the tank shoot air through the mixture that encourages the growth of aerobic bacteria, 
and eat the nutrients in the organic matter. From checking the electronics for all of the plant machinery to the meticulous monitoring of the liquor flow rates, this is a complex operation. Samples from the reactors are taken throughout the day to ensure that the biological processes are working at optimum rates. These are taken into the lab for a 2 liter settleometer test for sludge settling rates and volumes. And also for a 50 milliliter mixed liquor suspension solids test for weight. After the sludge in the reactor has settled, a pump at the bottom transfers the solids over to one of the two aerobic digesters where bacteria continue to reduce the volume of the organic matter. Then, the solids at the bottom of the digesters are pumped over to the facultative sludge lagoon, which is 8 feet deep. Aerobic bacteria eat organic material near the surface, and anaerobic and facultative bacteria work in the bottom and middle zones. After the solids settle to the bottom, they are dredged and pumped to a holding tank, then to a dewatering station where polymer is added, making it thicker. It then goes into the solar drying shed for three weeks. The biosolids are finally removed from the shed and stored next to the surge basin for later use by farmers for fertilizing non-food crops. Going back to the sequential batch reactors, after the mixture has settled for an hour, the decanters can slowly skim the clear water near the surface. Water is emptied into the equalization pond for temporary storage. At this point, the treated water is very clear, but still needs to be disinfected. Finally, the water passes through two banks of intense UV light that kills any remaining harmful organisms. Completing the water cycle, the cleansed water is emptied back into the Rogue River, safe for wildlife and for our neighbors downstream. <laughs>